Welcome back. The first item of business this afternoon is time for reflection. Our time for reflection leader today is the Right Reverend Dr Robert Gillis, the Bishop of Aberdeen and Orkney. Presiding Officer, Members of Parliament, each year on the 16th of April, we remember Magnus of Orkney. He was killed by the blow of an axe wielded at the instigation of his cousin, Harkon, in 1116. Rarely in medieval literature do we have such full accounts of what happened as we do for the life and timely death and subsequent glorification of Magnus. Also, his bones still exist. They've been authenticated and reburied in a pillar in Kirkwall's great cathedral, its building having been begun only 20 years after Magnus's death. Political activism in those days, and with it the unfortunate consequences of political rivalry, could lead to martyrdom. Martyrdom might then progress to sainthood. But such a process had to be supported by local veneration from amongst those who had known the murdered individual. Evidence of miracles was also necessary. So too, let it not go unsaid, was the support of the local bishop. Mercifully, in our times and in these islands, political rivalries rarely lead to axe blows on the head. Likewise, promotion to sainthood rarely, if ever, follows political demise, whether with or without the support of the local bishop. But for many beyond our shores, extermination by opponents because of political religious, societal, or clan and tribal rivalries is a very real and everyday occurrence. One has only to think of conflicts in any one of many countries and regions around the world to recognize the point that I'm making. In these places, local people, whether leaders or just ordinary folk, are martyred for no other reason than being who they are, where they are, and by believing what they hold dear. Sadly, there are those who would wish brutality of this kind to be imported here. So we do well to stand by the martyrs of today and to challenge those who wield the axe and the assault rifle. We do well to protect our shores and defend the peace and liberty so hard won in and for our nation. By doing so, the chance is increased that evildoers like Magnus's cousin Harkon will repent, as indeed he did. This much, at least, we can learn from the tragic death of St. Magnus, whose life lives on as we keep his faith and his sacrifice in mind. 